Hi there, thanks for coming along. This is episode 19 of my series 100 Casts, in which I will be casting over 100 games of League of Legends sent in to me by viewers and friends. If you'd like your replay featured on the channel, look in the description. You can figure out how to do that down there. Anyways, I'll see you at the end of the video. Hope you enjoy it. Alright then, let's get started on this shoutcast, shall we? I'm going to start us off here talking about the team comps, as I usually like to do at the beginning of the game when there's generally not as much action. The level ones are certainly possible, but usually for the first minute it's just people walking out of base. Very rarely do people take teleport and then teleport immediately out of base. I, I don't see that happen too often. Anyways, on purple team, down in the bottom lane, we have a Thresh and a Sivir, which is quite a... Uh, quite a dually comp? I don't know. I, the word I'm looking for is escaping me, but it's a comp that likes to fight a lot. They have a lot of burst, especially once they hit their level 2. Sivir with the boomerang and the bouncing blades able to reset her auto attack for a bit of extra burst, which you can do with the bouncing boomerang. And um, if you auto attack and then hit W, I think W is the bouncing one, um, it will immediately reset your auto attack animation and allow you to immediately throw out another boomerang that then starts bouncing around. Um, so yeah, Sivir therefore having some very high early game burst, but it is fairly matched as well by the enemy Lucian, who is also a very proficient dueler, duelist, especially in the early game with all of those spells that he can spam out as well as his passive allowing him an extra auto attack of his own albeit a bit of a less powerful one after every ability cast the supports though i would say that thresh does better in an all-out duel than nami does however nami certainly has the advantage in terms of sustain especially seeing as Thresh decided to opt for the Ancient Coin rather than a Relic Shield, the Ancient Coin giving him a bit more mana sustain in this lane, but the Relic Shield probably would have given more health sustain with the uh, HP healing procs that it gets when he executes a minion using it. Moving on to some of the other lanes, in the mid lane we have an Ari versus an Orianna, both um, very reliable champions, I would say. Like, they've been the, lots of different meta shifts has happened lots of different changes to the mid lane but those two champions for a while now have been fairly good mainstays of the mid lane always able to do their job at least pretty well even if they're somewhat behind Arya is a bit more reliant on snowballing than Orianna but Arya is still fairly decent at keeping in the game even if she's behind as we see the Nunu trying to invade onto the Maokai neat little sidestep there onto the Maokai's Q avoiding that miniature knockup and the slow does not sidestep the second one though Maokai does have a blue buff so we can throw out a few of those in fairly quick succession but he gets discouraged the Nunu having blood boil up is able to escape from his somewhat failed invade though he certainly didn't go down for it and he harassed the Maokai a bit and forced him to waste a little bit of time chasing him off. The Sivir using her spell shield there, just barely not getting hit by the bubble though, sidestepped it perhaps out of instinct as well as spell shielded, so she dodged the bubble despite spell shielding to try and prevent it from hurting her as the Thresh lands a hook onto Nami. Nami being forced to flash away after Thresh flies in on the end of that death sentence and then uses Flay to knock her back and slow her a bit. That is Nami's flash gonna be down now. If uh, Nunu hears about that, he might be able to come down bot lane and take advantage of that, though bot lane is pushing up and Nunu is not the best early game canker, being more of a jungle control champion with consume allowing him to be a very powerful invader as Thresh lands yet another hook, this time onto the Lucian, who's taken down to about a quarter of his hit points. Nami as well is down at about that low. The Lucian popping his health potion, though I believe he actually had biscuits, Luthi Lucian uh, doing a little bit of an uncommon mastery build there and choosing to go into the utility tree as Lucian AD carry does have biscuits as up in top lane. The 
the Nunu is coming to gank onto Aatrox, has the red buff slow as well as his snowballs being spammed out onto the Aatrox. Down in bot lane though, Maokai is performing a gank of his own. Twisted advances onto the Thresh who tries to flash away but flashes before the Twisted advance actually completes so he follows through despite the flash. Maokai using his second Twisted advance now to secure that last kill onto Sivir who also tried to flash away but could not get away in time and that is two kills going over to blue team. One going to Lucian, one going to Nami. They're certainly going to be happy about that, seeing as they were losing a bit in those first few minutes, but now that'll certainly bring them back into this lane, and they no longer are at a disadvantage, especially with Lucian being able to do quite well for himself in farm, being 25 to the enemy Sivir's 15. And it seems like up in top lane, the new news gank did not uh, end up getting a kill, as the... Uh, Aatrox is at about half health, is going to be trading on to the Nasus. Both champions up there in that lane being fairly uh, fairly high sustain and hard to duel with, especially given that Aatrox has that revive passive, and so it's going to be really difficult for Nunu to get off an actual gank up there in the top lane since neither of them have hard CC to hold him still and burst out that passive quickly. Rotating back around to the mid lane, Looking down at the CS, this lane is going very evenly. Only a 3 CS lead here for the Orianna as Thresh lands yet another hook. Lots of good hooks coming out from this Thresh. Onto the Lucian. They trade a bit of damage onto him. Maokai up in the top lane looking for a gank, but Nasus is too far under his tower for him to seriously consider going for that dive. It's a bit early in the game to be diving a tower at this point, and so he's going to walk away from that gank and just go back to farming his jungle. The Sivir going to be pushing in this Lucian. Sivir having the advantage in pushing. Sivir having the advantage in pushing against most comps, actually. She's very good at pushing waves. As Ari is going to be diving under the tower on to the Orianna, who is forced to pop her heel, but does not go down in the long run. The Ari having used Ignite, they both trade their secondary summoners there, neither one having to use Flash, at least. As down in bot lane, Purple Team is getting pushed back now. The Lucian having a Pickaxe and a Doran's Blade to Sivir's to Doran's Blades does have a bit more damage than she does and is able to output, therefore, a bit more damage in these duels, and Blue Team is now starting to come out ahead in the duels. Though Nami did go fairly low, but she does have sustain, so she's going to be able to heal herself back up some. Using Tidecaller's Blessing onto the Lucian, he relentless pursuits forward onto Sivir. One more auto attack does take her out. He gets exhausted, and Thresh is going to keep fighting him, trying to take him out to take revenge for his Sivir's death, but goes down himself for a well, very well-placed bubble from Nami, stunning him up in place for the Lucian to get himself a double kill. Very well played by Blue Team down there in the bot lane, as up in top lane, both Aatrox and Nasus now have their ults and are probably going to be looking to fight each other. I think Nasus would win in that duel simply because his Wither is such a perfect counter to Aatrox, who is a very auto-attack reliant champion, and thus would be really um, put out of his element by such a hefty auto-attack speed reduction. Though it does look like Aatrox is winning in this lane, he does have a 10 CS lead, I would say that Nasus scales better into the late game, so he can he can afford to stay a bit behind on CS so long as he doesn't become completely irrelevant. However, he's going to have to pull it out to the late game if he wants to do that. And Blue Team, having a 3,000 gold lead at this point, are all set to be able to win this game a bunch earlier if Purple Team doesn't start taking control of it again soon. And Purple Team would be out their late game comp not being able to pull that Nasus carry into the late game. Sivir, very nice spell shield there. Does Actually, I thought she used spell shield, but she didn't. I am a liar. But she uh, does trade with the Lucian in a little 1v1 as both supports were off warding, and she comes out behind as the Lucian does have a BF sword and a pickaxe. Looks like he's going to be rushing an infinity edge. Very common item to rush now as an AD carry ever since the Bloodthirster changes as Ari's going to be leaping onto Orianna. Orianna using Shockwave under tower. Both of them flashing away just before either of them go down. They're both at about 100 hit points, but Maokai's here in the mid lane as he's going to be charging after Ari. Is he in range for Twisted Advance? He's trying to get in range. He does have boots, and Ari does not, so he does manage to get in range eventually. Ari landing the charm to try and keep herself alive for a little bit longer. Doesn't really keep herself alive for that much longer, though. Does go down in the end to Maokai who gets a kill, putting blue team at 5 kills to 0, and putting them about 3 
maybe three and a half thousand gold up in this match. Up in top lane, Aatrox still winning this lane here in terms of CS and levels. He's a level above the Nasus, and he's landing Blades of Torment, and now the Fell Flight, I believe it's called, or is it Dark Flight? I don't recall. He lands both of those abilities onto Nasus and trades fairly well with him. As down in bot lane, Lucian's going pretty man mode, 2v1 against the enemy's bot lane team comp as his support was off wording, but he does manage in the end to trade pretty well despite being 2v1. As Nunu has found Maokai low health in his jungle, uses his ult, but gets interrupted by Maokai's Q. Nami's ult is dodged out there by both the Arya and the Nunu, and both teams disengage. Nami's ult and Nunu's ult both being burned in that little encounter there. Nami and Lucine going to be sweeping out a ward in tr in the tri bush near bot lane. Um, looking down to the items now, I notice that Nasus has neglected to get himself a trinket. Probably a mistake. He'll probably uh, fix that when he goes back to base. Nami's bubble just barely missing onto the Sivir there as she gets chased out by the enemy bot lane. If that bubble had hit, it probably would have spelled her doom, though I believe she had a spell shield up, so maybe not. Sivir being a decent champion to play against a Nami, since the bubble is fairly easy to tell once coming out. It's the animation and uh, the particle are fairly choreographed, as in the mid lane, the Nunu and the Orianna are going to be dueling it out. Nunu consuming a minion to get some health back. There's another snowball at Orianna, and then walks back under his tower, just harassing her, really, not really going for any serious engagement there. But in bot lane, they're certainly going for a serious engagement. Nami bubble being missed as Lucian, I mean not Lucian, the Sivir, takes the Dark Passage from Thresh. Aatrox had burned his ult up here in the top lane to try and get the kill onto Nasus, but Nasus had managed to escape, had burned his ghost to do so. And now Aatrox and Maokai are pushing in onto this tower. They might want to go for a dive here. Aatrox does have his passive up and would be able to survive a tower dive fairly effectively. He gets withered by that Nasus and he's attacking the tower, trying to take it down. As down in bot lane, Box is dropped by Thresh, who is very low on health, as well as Sivir. Lucian low on health as well. Sivir getting exhausted. The Thresh, the Lucian flashing under tower to get his passive auto attack on to the Sivir and take her out. He does go down, though, to the Thresh afterwards because of all that tower aggro he took by doing so. The heal not being enough to save him. As over in the river, we see a little bit of a duel going on between the Ari and the Orianna. Ari flashing forward to land the charm. Ori out of mana. Ari as well out of mana, but the auto attacks from Ari going to be enough to kill the Orianna. She does pick up that kill for herself, putting her at 1-1 one and one in this lane. A little bit behind in CS, but going to be making up for that by that kill that she just got now. Blue team still ahead, though, in terms of gold across the map. Still ahead by about 3,000 gold as they are up 6-2 and two in kills. As the Nunu is up here ganging the top lane onto the Aatrox, going to throw the snowball. He, the snowball sort of flew up in the air after him as he dark flighted. That was a fairly silly looking animation. Nunu going to be using that final auto attack there with the blood boil to take out the Aatrox's passive. Throw another snowball under the tower. Do they have enough damage? They do. Nas is getting that kill and then using his ult to survive the last few tower shots on the way out. That is a kill for Purple Team and a kill for Nasus, who really needed it up in that top lane. He was getting pushed out of lane over and over again by that Aatrox, and looks like he's going to finally go back to base now. Pushed back in the lane, I should say. I don't think he was ever pushed out of lane entirely, but Blue Team is taking advantage of the fact that Nunu was up in the top lane. They have a pink ward on this dragon. They know there's no vision for Purple Team, and they're going to be doing it. It's already down below half health. Thresh is coming over, sees the Nami near the dragon. They might have some idea that Blue Team is doing it now, but I don't really think they can stop it as Maokai does get the final blow onto the dragon. Lucian using the calling point blank range, going to be doing quite a lot of damage to the Sivir down in the 1v1. Thankfully, Thresh is nearby for the Sivir and can throw out that dark passage to save her life and pull her back to safety. Lucian going to be pushing up the minion wave here, going dashing under the tower, using piercing light and then his passive onto the Sivir to take her out. Now he's turning on Thresh, but he's low on health. There's a lot of minions here attacking him. Can Nami save him? Nami does not get in range to cast Ebon Flow in time to heal him up, and Thresh gets another kill for himself, putting him at 2-2. Two and two. Both of those kills coming from when Lucian Tower dives. Thresh throwing the hook out, but I believe it missed down there as we swapped up to the top lane for just a second to see these two top lane menaces dueling it out. The Nasus using Wither and then following after Aatrox with that Iceborne Gauntlet already completed is certainly going to be able to slow him up enough to do a lot of damage, bringing him down below half health. Aatrox is going to be able to sustain up if the Nasus cannot keep trading with him like that, though. 
the Nasus going to be just farming his Q and then going in with Wither and Spirit Fire landing a Siphoning Strike to do quite a lot of damage. He has a few Q stacks for himself already, evidently, as he is able to do about a fifth or so of the Aatrox's health with every Siphoning Strike with those procs from the Iceborne Gauntlet as well coming out. The uh, Iceborne Gauntlet being quite a good pickup on Nasus if you plan on going a fairly tanky build, since Sheen procs work very, Sheen procs and Sheen procking items work very, very well with Nasus's Q Siphoning Strike, which is a low cooldown, high damage ability that procs off of auto attacks. Up in top lane, Orianna and Maokai were nearby and were going to try and take out this Nasus, but he did use his Ghost to get back to the safety of his turret. Down in bot lane, we see Nami missing the bubble onto Ari there, who's choosing to back here. Does not realize she's standing on a ward, though. Gets hit by the Ardent Blaze and then Piercing Light is forced to walk away as Nami throws out Tidal Wave and then misses the bubble again. Thresh using his ult, perhaps a bit prematurely there, the enemy team not being able to pop any of the walls of the ult, though they do still get the Nami. All three members of Purple Team down in the bot lane going dangerously low, one of them actually going to zero, another one going to zero, wonderful play there by the Lucian, who gets a who gets an Ardent Blaze max range onto the Ari, and then using a minion gets a trick shot with the piercing light across the minion wave, and then, as I'm explaining what went on a few seconds ago, he goes and does something else incredible, uses Relentless Pursuit to chase down the Thresh, Dodges out the flay and then hits him with the double shot from his passive to confirm the third kill, getting a triple kill for himself down in that bot lane. Very well played by Lucian. And now he's up here on the tower, going to be doing some damage to that, and then going back to base with quite a bit more gold in his pocket. Already having completed that Infinity Edge, I wonder what he's going to be going for next. He does have a Vampiric Scepter as well. Might be going for Blade of the Ruined King, might be going for a, a uh, Bloodthirster, might be going for an Essence Reaver, I'm really not sure. He does have the Vampiric Scepter though, so he at least has some sustain whatever he chooses to build. Nunu with Blood Boil on, gonna be throwing out a Snowball onto Orianna. Orianna then using Shockwave, the Ari getting caught by that, throws out her charm onto Maokai. Maokai going dangerously low here, does have to pop his ult to get that damage reduction. Being chased out by the Ari, he does have to burn Flash. Ari now with Foxfire circling around here, chasing after the Orianna, but the Orianna uses Dissonance after Command attacking onto the Ari and manages to dissuade her with that slow and the damage. Aatrox has his passive back up and is back up here in the top lane. The lane having a... Uh, Changed hands now, really. The uh, table is on the other foot, you might say, as Aatrox is now the one being pushed in by the Nasus, who has the Iceborne Gauntlet and now has completed Boots of Swiftness and is going to be coming back to that lane with a lot of movement speed and a lot of slow. It's going to be able to stick onto Aatrox and continue to hammer out siphoning strikes over and over. Bit of a lull in the action now, as Nasus is teleporting back into top lane, and Lucian gets the first tower of the game for blue team down in bot lane. Um, Lucian being, having bought a bunch of components for that Trinity Force, as well as upgrading his boots to Berserker's Greaves with the gold that he got from that wonderful triple kill earlier. Nunu going under the tower, going to be using his ult to slow down the Aatrox. The Aatrox being forced to flash out of the ult. Nas is using his ult to go under tower range and take out that tower, and now he's going to be diving past where the tower used to be onto the Aatrox. Drops Spirit Fire, hits him with a Q to pop, in, top, pop, pop the Aatrox into his passive. I apologize there for that uh, small stutter as down in bot lane, the Lucian and Nami are pushing up onto this inner turret with no one around to stop them aside from the enemy bot lane who is getting bullied over and over again. That poor, that poor Sivir and Thresh really taking a lot of punishment in this lane. In mid lane, the Orianna dies just as Shockwave starts to cast and so doesn't get the kill on Ari in return. The Ari being able to 1v1 the Orianna and take her out just in time to save her own life. Lucian and Nami still pushing up this lane. Gonna be landing some auto attacks onto that tower now. Lucian flashing forward using Relentless Pursuit and the Culling to try and take out that Sivir. However, Thresh flays him out of the Culling, canceling the last few shots of it that might have taken out Sivir. Thresh now flaying him under tower, using the box to keep him there. Nami flashing forward to try and get the kill onto Thresh. Goes down to Sivir. Ari is down here in the bot lane. Gonna be throwing out Orb of Deception as Nunu shows up to blood boil the Sivir and chase after Lucian. He might be in a bit of trouble here. Ari circling around the Nunu, I believe, just flashing forward and throwing out Snowball. 
This is a fairly old replay though, I think, as Lucian does seem to have the slow removal on Relentless Pursuit. He's going to be tossing out the Ardent Blaze and then the Piercing Light onto Nunu, trading Auto Attack for Auto Attack with him, exhausting the Nunu. He took Exhaust, actually. I didn't even notice that until just now, but it saved his life in that scenario, and he manages to escape for now. Is he going to be trying to duel some more, though, as we go to the top lane where Nasus is being ganked by Aatrox, and down in the bot lane, it looked looks like Sivir has fallen to the Lucian. That was a lot of action. Nasus and Sivir going down for Purple Team in the end, Blue Team being 12-7 and seven now, and about 5,000, maybe a bit less, gold up on the map entirely. A charm hitting Orianna there, very nice charm from Ari over the wall. She's going to use Spirit Rush to dodge out of the Shockwave. Wonderful dodge there. She throws the Orb of Deception, but it doesn't quite connect. A few shots of Foxfire are going to auto-target onto the Orianna. Another nice charm over the wall there, going to seal the deal for Ari, who gets another solo kill onto Orianna. Ari doing very well for herself out of this mid lane matchup. The Orianna being 0-3 and, and Ari being 4-2. and two. The Ari now being given blue buff by the Nunu. She's going to go back to base with that gold, see what she picks up. As over on the top side of the map, Maokai is counter jungling and going to be taking out this red buff. Again, we're at a bit of the lull in the action, so I would like to talk about builds at this point, or more specifically, I would like to talk about the summoner spells, which Lucian took. I didn't notice until that engagement down in the bot lane where Nunu was chasing after him for quite a while, and he exhausted him right before the absolute zero ended, that Lucian had chosen to take exhaust rather than heal or barrier or even ignite. I, I Very rarely do you see an AD carry take exhaust because you have to be fairly close range to be able to use it, but he seems to know what he's doing with that summoner spell. He used it very effectively in the duel with Nunu, really cutting down Nunu's damage as he tried to use his uh, high damage ult absolute zero, that large AoE slowing effect that does quite a lot of damage. It actually has a 3 to 1 AP scaling ratio if you manage to get it fully charged. Ari being forced to use Spirit Rush to get away from multiple members of Blue Team in the mid lane. As Thresh is caught out here by the Nami, very nice bubble there placed against the wall so he had no way to dodge that one. And now the Lucian is unstoppable getting a kill onto Thresh there. He, he's going 10 and 2. Aatrox going to be slowing down this Nasus with the Blades of Torment and then kiting back away from the Nasus as he goes into his ult. Aatrox goes into his own ult now and lands some more auto attacks onto Nasus. He gets withered, but Maokai is, is there as well. Going to be CCing the Nasus. Nasus being very tanky, taking a while to go down, but I don't think he can really escape this one. Lots of CC coming out from both members of Blue Team who are committing to this gank. The Maokai finally getting that kill there with a final Q. Managing to take out the Nasus as down in bot lane, Sivir has been left to her own devices. And as I said a good bit earlier in this shoutcast, she is quite good at pushing lanes. And if you leave her alone, she will take turrets. Ari flashing forward using DFG and Charm onto the Orianna. The Nunu being interrupted immediately after starting the channel on Absolute Zero by the Nami Tidal Wave. Purple Team not going to be able to get a kill in mid lane as down in bot. Sivir is going to pay the price for her split push and get killed by the enemy team. But she did manage to get an inhibitor tower. So that one death is certainly going to be worth what she obtained in return. Ari using Spirit Rush again to get away from this Maokai who's approaching onto the mid lane. They nearly got down the mid outer turret here as Purple Team has actually fairly consistently had a turret lead on Blue Team this game and that is going to be their saving grace if indeed they have one because they are behind in terms of gold and kills and dragons but they are at least ahead in turrets which means they're fairly ahead in map control as well and so if they can play that well and stall out to the late game they do have Anasis to help them carry there and Sivir is very good to have with Anasis on your team because her speed buff from her ult really makes it a lot harder for the enemy team to kite out that Nasus, which is Nasus's major weakness come late game. He's fairly tanky and has quite a bit of damage but he's very very easy to kite because he has no way of getting in range of someone who has any hard CC or high mobility. Swapping over to the mid lane we see multiple members of blue team assembling here as well as purple team probably gonna have an impromptu ARAM in the mid lane 
with both teams sending three or four members there. Nami landing a nice bubble onto Thresh. Thresh gets jumped on by the Q from Aatrox. It actually doesn't connect. Thresh flashing out at the last second. Maokai twisted advance onto Ari. Ari then using her ult to try and escape. Does get away with barely any health left. A teleport now coming in from Nasus, who comes in with his ult running. Going to be withering the Aatrox, going after him with those siphoning strikes. He's under tower now, though. He's tanky, but perhaps not that tanky, as the Lucian's now turning around and is godlike, taking out that Thresh, chasing after Nunu. Does have a red buff. Relentless pursuits forwards. Exhaust the Nunu to keep him in place to try and catch him, but the Nunu, with Blood Boil, even when exhausted, is a bit too quick for the Lucian to keep chasing, but that is one kill going over to blue team and none for purple team, despite burning a teleport as well as a lot of spells there. The <laughs> the Nasus nearly going down, turning around and withering the Lucian and then getting away just in time. If that last auto attack had been a crit, he would have been taken out, but thankfully for him, it wasn't. As Sivir comes into his defense and takes out that Lucian, getting the shutdown gold for herself, she's certainly going to be happy with that. That is a lot of gold going over to her that she desperately needed because she has fallen quite far behind in this match and really needs to catch back up, and shutdown gold is a certainly viable way of catching back up into a game where your enemies have far too many kills for you to consider fighting them head on. If you can pick them off and get that shutdown gold, then you can get back into a game pretty well. This shutdown gold can be uh, quite a bit, especially if the person is rather far ahead. Maokai just going to be finishing out his jungle here. Maokai becoming very, very tanky, has built an Aegis of the Legion, a Giant's Belt, and finished off his Spirit of the Ancient Golem, which is going to be amplifying the effects of all the other tanky items that he picks up, provided they have health as a statistic, because it gives bonus health based off of how much health you have, which is very, very powerful on a champion like Maokai, who has percentage health healing, as well as having a lot of health means that you heal a lot off of your percentage health healing passive. The Ari throwing out skill after skill, going to be landing a lot of harass onto the Nami. A hook coming out from Thresh, but probably not the target he wanted to hit. Maokai barely taking any damage at all from that. As uh, in the top lane, Nasus is going to be continuing to push onto this Aatrox, who is getting bullied out now by the large, um, by the large alien space dog, who's going to be coming in and siphoning, striking the Aatrox down to about half health with just a few Qs. He's going to be pushing up that lane again, but Maokai is here now to tell him to run away. The Su the Nasus is going to be following orders and running away, but he gets hit by the very tips of blade, Blades of Torment there, which allows Maokai to get in range to Twisted Advance. He then turns with his ult, trying to take out this Aatrox before he goes down, lands a Siphoning Strike. He does not actually even pop his passive. No, the Spirit Fire not being enough to take the Aatrox into his passive. He doesn't even get that before going down. The Aatrox picking up the kill there, getting the first kill of the game for himself, and that's a another kill for blue team who are 17 and 9. This whole time though, Sivir has been down in the bot lane, is on the inhibitor now. Nami not really wanting to go into a 1v1 with her, as Lucian thankfully has based and is back here. Going to be laying out the pain onto that Sivir, and the Nami actually landing a final auto attack there to take her out. A good two-man shockwave from Ari, I mean from Oriana here in the mid lane, but Ari is also around. I'm going to make sure that despite a nice shockwave, she's going to go down, and that is another turret going over to purple team, who again are 1-0 and in terms of turrets. Aatrox getting sped up by the Nami there, who used Tidecaller's Blessing and her bubble to give her a, to give the Aatrox a speed buff, and the Ari goes down in the end to an auto attack that chases after her through her ult from Lucian. Auto attacks being very, very difficult to shake off. Nami trying to zone out the Thresh and Nunu, but blue team might be considering going for a Baron here, though they have seen Thresh on low health and are going to be chasing up towards him in the mid lane and are now going to be pushing out this minion wave up to the inhibitor tower as Lucian's going to be going to check on the enemy blue buff, I think. He does dash over the wall and um, purple team going to be back here in the mid lane. Aatrox here alone to try and push up against them as Maokai and Lucian are on Dragon, going to be taking that out. I believe Blue Team has gotten every Dragon so far this match, which I think is three, perhaps four. So that is contributing quite a bit to their gold lead, which is nearly at 10,000 right now. 48.7k for Blue Team and just about 40,000 for Purple Team. So that's that's an 8.8 8, 8, thousand gold lead. That's easy math. As Maokai are going to be twisted advancing, uh, twistedly advancing onto the Nunu, and then finishing him off with another twisted advance 
to take him out in the end there. Lucian flashing forward and using Relentless Pursuit onto Ari, but Ari just dashing away with Spirit Rush is going to be able to survive. Did have to burn her ult, but Lucian burnt Flash there, so that's a decent trade enough for her, but most of her team is down, and Blue Team is pushing relentlessly up this mid lane. They're, they've already gotten the inhibitor tower down to half. Orianna using her ball there to poke out onto the Thresh. Nami flashing forward to land a very nice bubble onto Thresh. The Orianna going to be finalizing that kill there with Shockwave. The exhaust coming out onto Ari as Lucian flash, I mean not flashes, dashes forward to take him out. The the Nass is trying to teleport back to help his team, but Aatrox interrupting him with Dark Flight. He uses his ghost to chase after the Aatrox now in a fit of vengeance. His He, he being very annoyed that his teleport was uh, cancelled there. And the Nasus, though, getting interrupted in his quest for vengeance against the Aatrox by the Maokai, who has shown up and is using his ult to mitigate a bunch of that damage. He does manage to knock Aatrox into his passive, but I don't think he's going to get much more than that, as Maokai manages to take out the Nasus, going unstoppable now. The Lucian, Orianna, and Nami still in the enemy base. They have taken out this inhibitor, and they're going for the Nexus turrets now, though they are forced to back off as their minion wave dies out. And that is an inhibitor turret and an inhibitor down for blue team. And Purple Team didn't really get much out of it, just lost a bunch of deaths. Ari nearly being able to stop the Lucian from backing there, but he manages to get out just in time before she throws out a skill to stop him from getting back home safely. The Nunu, going to be rushing over to the Baron Pit, doesn't want Blue Team to be doing that. Actually, he stop makes a pit stop at the Wraiths. As down in bot lane, Blue Team does have their own inhibitor out. I believe Sivir took that while the camera was elsewhere. And so there's an inhibitor down for both teams at least. And there's a bit of a lull in the action again because both teams just got a bit spent from those team fights and need to regroup. Blue team seems to be regrouping here in the mid lane. They might want to push that out and then go for Baron. Nami sweeping out that bush doesn't find any wards though as Maokai is going to be scouting ahead with saplings and Orianna scouting ahead with her ball. This team being very good at checking brushes without having to face check them. Ari getting caught out a bit, forced to use her ult to escape. There was a pink ward that saw her in that bush. She's going to find Maokai again in the jungle though. Gets twisted advanced on and then killed off by the shockwave dissonance from Orianna. Sivir taking advantage of the fact that most of blue team was a bit far away from the Nami and the Lucian uses her ult to charge at them, but the rest of blue team now has managed to regroup and are on to these three members of purple team. A teleport coming in from Aatrox. He's going to show up and start chasing after the Nunu. The Sivir going down towards the bottom of the screen there as Aatrox does manage to finish off. Actually, no, the, the um, Maokai is dominating and takes that out as Nami finalizes the kill on Thresh. Actually, no one else even got an assist there. It's a 1v1 between the supports, the Nami getting the kill onto Thresh there as Blue Team is going to be wandering over towards this Baron Pit, probably going to be starting that off. The only member who went down for them in that engagement was Lucian, and he will be back up in five seconds or so, which should be time enough for him to be able to get this Baron buff once Blue Team secures it, if Purple Team does not get here in time to stop them from taking it successfully. Maokai has his ult running to prevent some of that damage from Baron, so that keeps his team healthy in the event of Purple Team trying to stop them, but the Baron is already at about half health and is going down fairly quickly. Aatrox and Maokai being able to take that out fairly quickly, as Maokai does have percentage health damage now with his new Twisted Advance. The Ari chasing after the Nami does take her out, gets shut down gold actually, as the Nami was on a killing spree. Now Nasus, with his ult running in a lot of health, gets exhausted by Lucian and does not manage to finish off the kill onto Aatrox because of it. That exhaust paying big dividends this match. That is two kills for Ari as she did manage to chase down the mid lane and support of blue team. And actually, somewhere in that, somebody from purple team got the got the steal. I think it was Nasus got the steal. I don't know how I didn't notice that, but purple team is wearing the Baron buff. And they managed to get the steal on the Baron there, despite Maokai being around and Nunu not being around. So that is a bit of a slip up on Maokai's part. And that certainly brings Purple Team back into the game, especially for the duration where they're wearing this Baron buff, which gives a lot of artificial gold in terms of stats. That's the turnaround they needed and the turnaround they got. They might be able to pull this game back to a victory now that they've gotten that, especially considering they still have that inhibitor taken down in bot lane as well as a one turret lead on the map overall. 
the Sivir going to be using her spell shield to stop that Twin Shadows from slowing her, but a very nice tidal wave coming across two walls, and then a ton of burst from the Lucian. The Nami actually getting that cheeky little auto attack in there at the end is going to be taking the kill, getting the double kill now for herself, sneaking another auto attack in onto the Nunu. That is two members of Purple Team down, and the Death Timers are getting pretty long here at about 34 minutes into the game. The Nunu down for a good 40 seconds, and Sivir down for an equal amount of time as Nasus is a bit too far up mid lane, gets caught out by three members of blue team uses his ghost but is getting slowed hits gets hit up by the culling for the final blows at long range from the lucian who has gone with that blade of the rune king as well as a trinity force so he's a good amount of attack speed so there's a lot of bullets coming out whenever he presses r and he gets that kill putting him at putting himself at 15 and 4 would have been 17 and 4 except nami really wanted those two earlier kills for herself where she snuck in those autos to take them out a bit, little bit earlier in the match Nami going to be uh, slowing down the Ari. The Lucian landing an auto or two onto her brings her down to half health. Ari then using DFG. The Lucian flashing away, though, from the charm does manage to survive. A hook, though, lands from Thresh, and I think this spells the end for the Lucian, but the Oriana puts her ball onto Lucian, and when he gets pulled in by the hook, uses Shockwave and Dissonance to take out the Thresh. He goes down, but three members, two members, I say, I mean, of Purple Team are chasing after the Oriana in return. The Nunu flashes forward to secure that final auto attack onto Oriana, which takes her out. And some pings are going down onto the open inhibitor of Blue Team down in the bot lane. The Purple Team rushing towards that now. The Sivir using her spell shield to completely block the tidal wave from Nami is just going to be getting mana back from, though, from that, though, as the... Purple team did not have any ability to follow up on that ult being somewhat wasted there. The Nunu trying to go after this dragon, but Maokai is still up and could potentially steal it if the enemy team is not careful. Using Consume, the Sivir here going to be throwing in some auto attacks as well. The dragon going down fairly quickly. A sapling coming over to try and steal it out from Maokai. He actually flashes over the wall, but is a bit too late. Nunu getting that smite secure onto dragon as Ari was pushing up the mid lane and got another turret for Purple Team, putting them actually at 7-2 and two in terms of turrets. That Baron Steel really helping them turn this game back around, perhaps. Ari might be caught out there here, though, running back and forth through the bush, trying to find a way to escape, uses the last two charges of her ult to get around behind the enemy team and run off into their jungle where she is safe, but the Thresh is not safe, found Aatrox who slows him down, the Maokai now coming in and doing some damage as well, the Maokai is legendary as Thresh goes down to him, Nunu then found out trying to save his friendly Thresh is in a bit of trouble himself as he goes down to the Aatrox that is two members of blue team down, I mean purple team down, but Sivir is down in the bot lane going after that open inhibitor, blue team though is sent Oriana back. She's going to use Shockwave and Dissonance to try and deal with this Sivir. The Sivir then spell shielding, but perhaps a bit too late. Doesn't block anything. Another command attack is going to bring her really low. And those empowered auto attacks from Oriana doing a bunch of damage, but Sivir does manage to flash away before she can kill her with the final command attack. Oriana down there still chasing after her as we swap over towards the enemy's base where Maokai is going to be twisted advancing past the Nexus turrets onto the Ari. The Ari not having her ult up is going to get shut down by Aatrox. The Lucian getting slowed by the Nasus Wither. It's not going to be enough to save him though as he does go down to the Lucian in the end there. I'm sorry if you just heard a tapping sound. I accidentally hit the mic as the Oriana has still been chasing Sivir this whole time and those empowered auto attacks going to be able to take her out and four members of Blue Team on this Nexus gonna be winning it for Blue Team. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you tomorrow. Hi again. Thanks for watching. If you'd like your replay featured on the channel, check the description. You can figure out how to do that there. Many thanks to Lucorn for the use of the replay. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good one.